Hi there, Sandra here from the Schwoven's Nest. Thanks so much for joining me today. Today's video is part of a challenge hosted by Pretty Simple Sherry. If you have not seen Sherry's channel yet, you need to go check it out. She does a lot of inspired looks, some DIYs, apothecary, pottery barn. She also does a lot of trash to treasure and thrift flips, so you're sure to find something that you like on her channel. Her co-host for this month is Lisa and Company. Lisa does some amazing thrift flips. Her favorite store to shop at is the Habitat for Humanity Restore. So if you like to do things with the Restore products, you're definitely gonna wanna check her channel out. She's just moved into a new home, so she's gonna have lots of decor and DIYs for you. I'll have Sherry and Lisa's channels linked in my description box. And there's also going to be a playlist. You're not gonna wanna miss out on that. Here's what I chose to make over for the Ugly Thrift Challenge. It's a mailbox and it was $4.99 at Value Village. It has some hand painted flowers on it and I'm sure in its day somebody would have thought it was very pretty. I think they look like pansies possibly, but you know what? They're just not my style and I definitely want to do something with this mailbox. It's solid wood, it's pine and it's really, really good condition. So what I'm going to do is just take some rough grit sandpaper. I think this is an 80 grit. I'm just going to sand down the top and then definitely sand down all of the paint just so I have a nice smooth surface to work with. The original piece had these Velcro glued on and I just needed to get the glue off. So I'm taking my handy scraper from the Dollar Tree and just gently pushing underneath the glue so I don't pull off any of the wood and just get that glue off. I'm not quite sure why they would have Velcroed a mailbox shut, but hey, you see all sorts of things when you go thrifting. I'm going to start by giving the mailbox one coat of this Ultra Cover Rust-Oleum Flat Black Paint. And the reason I'm doing that is because the end result is going to be a white mailbox. However, sometimes I have found that with white, some of these other colors, these floral colors might bleed through the chalk paint. So I'm going to take this step and do it black first. So that will block anything from bleeding through onto the white paint. I'm also using my spray paint trigger that I picked up at a hardware store a while ago. I'll have that link down in my description box. It really helps to be able to control the paint a little bit better because it's a trigger rather than just pressing down with the nozzle. The black paint is fully dry now, so I'll be starting to do my coats of white. I'm just using a brush that I picked up at the dollar store and the paint that I'm using is just latex house paint. It's a white shade and it is eggshell, I believe. So that's a, a step above flat. So it may not be as flat as a chalk paint, but it works really well. And I actually did pick this up at the Habitat for Humanity Restore for $20. It was either a mist tent or somebody just didn't use it or didn't need it any longer. So Lisa, I went to the Restore and I found a great buy. So this one's for you. One thing to remember when you're using a regular latex house paint is you're probably going to need to do one to two coats more than if you were using a chalk paint. Chalk paint is meant to cover anything really, really well with just one or two coats. A regular latex paint will probably need three or four. I ended up giving this mailbox three coats of white paint. Here's the mailbox painted with three coats of white and it looks beautiful. You'll notice I did spray paint the inside of the mailbox black, but I'm not going to go with the white inside because it's a really narrow mailbox and I was afraid I wasn't going to be able to reach all the way down and get some proper coats on it. So I'm just going to leave the interior black. What I'm doing now is I'm going to do a grain sack striping on this and I've never done this before but I've seen a few other YouTubers do it so I've been inspired by them. What I'm going to do first is lay down three strips of the painter's tape 
And the reason I need three of them is that I'm using the center one as a spacer, which will then be removed and that will become the first stripe. I've switched over to my chalk paint and I'm going to be using the charcoal color in the Rust-Oleum line of chalked paints. I'm also going to be using a makeup sponge to apply the chalk paint. Now, if you see something flashing on my screen here, I was outside, it was a beautiful day and I decided to do this outside. I've got the sunshine just kind of flashing through the trees here. So I hope that doesn't bother you too much but I just couldn't resist. I needed to just get outside and do this project out in the nice warm sun. Now that I've got the black all on there, I'm going to just remove the painter's tape very gently. The paint is still a little bit wet and then I'll wait for it to dry and start with the second stripes. To get the second set of stripes, I'm taking the painter's tape and just going over the first original stripe and I'm doing about a quarter of an inch of a white space there. And then I'm going to go over with another piece of tape and create a second stripe. So as you can see here, I'm really thinking about this. It took me quite a while to figure out how I was going to do this. And I did do some taping first and then had to remove it and start over. So this is what you want it to look like. So these first two, you can see that I'm taking this third one off because I did that one wrong. And what you want to do is have a piece of white showing, then you're going to mark off another stripe next to it. So you have a skinny stripe with a white gap in between. Little confusing, but it turns out beautiful in the end. So it was worth it. Here I'm painting on the secondary stripes and they're just two thin stripes next to the big thick one that is the center stripe. Here's the reveal and I'm crossing my fingers in the background hoping that it turned out the way it was supposed to. And yes, it did. So I've got a thick stripe in the center and I've got two thin stripes on the other side, which gives it the look of a grain sack striping. I'm so excited that I actually made this work. Now I'm just going to take my sandpaper again and go around some of the edges and pull off some of that white paint. Some of the sanding will go all the way down to the pine color underneath, but some of it will also show the black, which gives it a really beautiful look and texture. Since this is a mailbox, I decided to put the word mail on it. I'm using my three inch tall simple script stencils. I'll have a link for those down in my description box. These are my most favorite stencils that I use. I love this simple script. I just wish I had something a little bit shorter because these three inch ones are really tall, but they work really well on this project. I would just love to have other projects. Now I wasn't able to find the I, so I'm using the L and just the straight portion of the L and I'm just gonna fake it and then uh, add a little piece down at the bottom to finish it off. As I was finishing this up, I realized that on the top lid, I didn't have any grain sack striping. It was just plain white and it just didn't really look good. So I decided to add that too. Here's what my mailbox looks like now.
I'd like to thank Sherry and Lisa for hosting this challenge. If you like this kind of content, I would love for you to hit that red subscribe button and stick around a while. You can also click on the bell to get notified whenever I upload a new video. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.